Hey guys, Brendan here from the EV and Hybrid Network. Um, I'm in the middle of a job on a hybrid Civic here, so the IMA or Integrated Motor Assist System. So this particular car has a problem with its inverter. So we're in the back seat here and I've depowered this vehicle so it is safe aside from the battery itself is now the only energy storage uh, portion that, that is still a danger. But I'm safe to work on these areas over here. So we've got a separate inverter for the air conditioning compressor. We've got a DC-DC converter which is like your alternator. And we have just pulled out the contactors box. And then underneath all of that is going to be the main motor inverter that we want to get to. So when I get them all out, I'll um, show you the, the different components. Uh, but I'm going to tuck into this so we can get our old failed inverter out. So fresh off the plane, we've got our brand new inverter here for the Honda Civic. Uh, so notice the part number 1B300RWO003 compared to our old fail unit same part number but visually you can already obviously see some differences and on the circuit board there are definitely differences so this is an oe revised part that we've got honda australia didn't want to sell to us saying that it was discontinued couldn't get this car fixed uh, but using our network our contacts over in the usa we're able to get the revised part number sent over from there and pretty soon that means we're going to be able to get back down and there'll be one more honda civic hybrid back on the road Okay, so we've got our new inverter bolted into the assembly that you previously saw up here. So on the bottom side of this is your DC-DC converter and an inverter for the air conditioning. This being our main traction motor um, inverter. So these three phase wires here go up to the front of the car and go to the main motor. So important things with these that we're doing to make sure that our new inverter is protected. So we've gone through and we've done milli-ohm testing and mega-ohm testing uh, by access to the front motor on these wires here to make sure that we don't have any issues with our three-phase traction motor which certainly could cause damage to our inverter we don't want to repeat failure um, also just checking the cooling system so we've got our blower motor fan here that's drawing in fresh air which goes through here and then is fed in underneath there and those plates you saw on the bench for the air cooling of this inverter so we'll keep going with this and get it all in and get the car back to operational and all ready, so a place for everything and everything in its place. Uh, we're ready to get the cover back on this. And with the physical part of the job done now, so time for us to now get in and do some resets and calibrations. And we're also gonna do a test of the fan. So on these, inside we have a fresh air drawer and we saw that blower motor when we were in the, the back there. And so we can come around here and I can activate this test is going to run the fan through its different RPM and I'm able to feel that so I've got nice airflow here which means we're not going to overheat our power electronics namely our inverter that we've just fit so happy that we're gonna have good cooling going to this new component as well so aside from just a workshop, we've got our electronics repair lab here. This is our old inverter. So taking a look inside, we've got our control circuit board. Underneath that are our three IGBTs. So that stands for insulated gate bipolar transistors. And this is our faulty one here. Um, we have damaged the board pulling it off because we had no intention of repairing it. So I'm not gonna waste time trying to desolder it to get it off. So um, the damaged one, you can see burn marks. When we put this up to get in there, you can see all that burning uh, that's there, as opposed to, if we say, look at one that isn't damaged, you, know, you can still see it's quite clean and there, there's no uh, burn marks going on underneath there. So these IGBTs, these are what create the uh, AC power for your motors out of the DC battery and we've got our three phases being taken care of by these three large power electronics IGBTs once burnt out. Now some people have replaced just this, not available from Honda but all electronics are available somewhere. Um, you can just replace these, extremely common to then get a repeat failure because there's fundamental problems with the control board. So as you saw, we've got a revised part from Honda and this Civic will be good for many years to come. Okay. So there we have it guys, one Civic, all fixed. 
got its new inverter in there, done all the calibrations, resets, cleared out all the previous fault codes and this one's back on the road in full power. So many years to come for this Civic. We're also able to do a high voltage battery test on this. Doing pretty good, 52% um, usage left in it. So when you talk about capacity, it's got 52% capacity remaining. And for a 10 year old car, that's getting towards the end of its life, but generally you can get down to around about 40 before you're getting you know, really big fuel economy problems and these kinds of things. So this one's all good to go. A very big thank you to the ACDC Training Center over in USA. So we've completed training over there. It's part of the EV and hybrid network. Uh, we base a lot of the training that we bring back to Australia on the great content that they've got over there and they were very helpful in getting what was a difficult part over here that Honda Australia didn't want much to do with and the network was able to get it fixed. So if you want to get involved in getting uh, your hybrid or EV service repaired or any diagnostics done on it, um, take a look at the site there, throw your postcode in, you'll find a member workshop uh, close to you and get someone that knows uh, their way around the hybrid and EV space to give your car the best care. Thanks guys.